talking to Volta call today. This is August 15th, and we have a breakout session scheduled for discussion on flow composition, a continuation of the previous meeting discussions. And with that, I will hand it over to Sean uh, for a presentation. And then also a reminder, we are recording this, and so keep that in mind during the presentation and discussion. Thanks. And Sean, I will make you presenter here in just one moment. Okay. All right, there you go. Uh, well, I guess I'm not presenter for some reason. Oh, I have a second. I got that. Okay. Okay. Can, can, uh, We'll see uh, this first slide here, right? Is this? Yes. Okay, good. All right, so here's a repeat of the um, agenda that Julia had shared. Um, if anyone has any changes to this, um, just let me know. Um, so, the, again, based on the email exchanges we'd had, um, so the, the first point of discussion was a standard standardization interoperability um, and then there's the flow decomposition architecture like logical flows and some questions around that and I threw in something about technology profiles we can we can talk to that a bit um, <clears throat> so I guess we'll start um, just just a quick quick overview um, so basically um, the applicable standards here for um, uh, ONF or, or basically G.984 uh, series of standards for GPON. Uh, there's 980.7.1 um, for XGSPON, um, G.989 series for NGPON2. Um, so, so basically, these, these standards define mainly the you know the lower layers, the uh, the physical layer, the transmission convergence layers, you know, DBA, QoS on the pond itself. Um, some of these standards actually reference uh, some of the BBS standards like um, uh, TR 101, TR 156 that define um, some of the tagging operations um, that you know, and the splits between what the ONU does and the OLT does, um, and um, the problem forum itself again has TR101 and 156 for kind of the uh, layer two access service definition uh, enhancements on for TR178 and uh, TR280 for for uh, you know services that um, you know uh, multi service BNGs and and um, some enhancements to QoS and multicast around uh, the TR280 standards. So uh, BBF also have defined defined a bunch of uh, certification tests uh, in uh, 247 and uh, TR255. So again, uh, the certification tests are, are verifying the ability of the you know the ONU to support the you know the, the tagging operations uh, defined in uh, 156 and, and, and 280. Uh, so um, there, and the, and basically, there are a lot of ONUs that are certified in this way. I guess currently up to like 66 different uh, vendors ONUs that are currently certified to that model. And so the, the um, you know, 247 is being enhanced for um, XGS PON and NGPON2 as well. So the, the, these are kind of work in progress, as, as this slide says. 
Um, and, you know, typical cycle of interoperability testing, in this case, GPON, is, you know, operator requests uh, a 247 test for an ONU vendor, and uh, the ONU vendor tests against the uh, OLT of interest, and basically that the certification of interoperability for the operator. Obviously, you know, BBF 247 testing, you know, defines a certain set of tests, but the operators can, you know, obviously are, in, are driving the whole show here and they can request, you know, certain different tests and different models as well. So, uh, for instance, if they wanted to request that the OLT does all the tagging, they could request that. Um, but that's, I mean, typically all the OLT, all the OLTs in the world were developed against TR-156. Um, and, that, and which defines a certain model of tagging on the ONU and tagging on the OLT. Um, so, um, so I, I guess the I'm just I guess this first part is just emphasizing there is a whole ecosystem around, you know, testing and functionality on the OLTs and the ONUs. But obviously, the, the operators can uh, can define variants of that. Um, and then these. The following so slide works. here. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Just to make it clear, we totally agree with keeping with the specs. I, I, I don't want to, you know, don't want to deviate from that anyway. Otherwise, nothing works and nobody can get anything done. Um, so just, okay. just, 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 yeah, just no, as a, no, a I'm, trying, I'm trying to run off. Even with the NGPON2 stuff, you know, if, if it's spec, it's IPU and BBS, then yes, that's what we're all trying to work towards. Okay, very good, very good. Um, and then it's just a quick overview of uh, XGS Pawn system. You know, we have the, the systems that we have now, let's say with the Edge Core or Atrans or OLT, you, you have a XGS Pawn port which goes to a splitter and there are ONUs, right? So um, if we look at type B protection, if you, I mean, so if, if, if you view an OLT just in isolation, an OLT and an ONU, I mean, you can do you can view it as a black box, right? So basically, whatever goes in the ONU and comes out the uh, network and an I interface, or I said I interface, if if that matches what the the you know the operator wants, then you're good, right? Now, so the problems become uh, where y you need to have um, interoperability in terms of uh, the pawn itself. So what, whether whether the the pawn bit in the middle needs to be viewed as a white box. So what goes in a uni and comes out of an RS interface on the pawn and goes to a SR interface, that needs to be that needs to match between different OLT vendors. So this 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 case is showing um starting to show the top one is, is basically kind of a, a dual parented system. So this there's an SNI as an OLT and a, a separate um, OLT with its own uh, SNI interface. So it could be this could be two vendors, right? So the architecture here on on the dual pawn is where this this feeder fiber area before the splitter is the protected part. So if there's a cut um, on this feeder fiber, then um, you split you switch from the you know the active OLT to, to the standby OLT, and there are a lot of implications around that. So once the ONU has switched from from one to the other, then it, you know, the ONU has to have the same ONU ID. All the TCA layer attributes have to be the same between the two OLTs. So that's that's what, another um, interoperability um, requirement. So all the, the ALEC IDs, the GEMPORT IDs, the ONU ID has to be the same between those two systems. Um, so on the bottom diagram here is basically just showing, um, you know, it's uh, basically two different pond ports on the same OLT system essentially. So basically it's using the same SNI interface, so it's with the same vendor. So, so um, okay, so uh, Sean, you say the ONU ID should be the same, and you say the alloc ID also has to be the same, and the gem port IDs have to be the same, and the gem port ID has to be the same. So, which means when you when you fill over, you mean those? Maybe you're going to address that, but 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 in order to support fill over. Those those IDs cannot be reassigned. Is that what you're saying? So so I guess, I guess the idea is I, I, once it fails over, I want to fail quick, right? So I want to go. Uh, the idea is I you know I'd like to achieve less than 50 milliseconds, right? And so in order to do that, you don't want to reconfigure the ONU, right? You don't want to take it down and then bring it back up and reconfigure 
all over again with di potentially different values, right? Mm -hmm. We well, could do that, but it's going to take longer to switch over. So I ideally, you'd like to switch between two OLT systems that uh, have the same understanding of what a, a given service for a given ONU is, right? The ONU ID is the same. The uh, well, the, the ALLOC IDs and the GEMPORT IDs are the, are the same. So since we are not doing much, a lot of production here right now, so I, I have no experience. So does it mean when the northbound system or whatever system coming down to provision this ONU, they have to provision on both OLT side uh, assigned with the same same o ALLOC ID, same ONT ID. I think ONT ID, that's, that, that is easy to man manage, but the allo all allocation ID and also the GEMPORT ID, all those has to be manually make sure the OOT1 and OOT2 OOT will have the exactly the same ID? Well, not necessarily, right? So, I mean, the if you look, if you think of the, this bottom case here, where it's a single parented system, so because I have an OOT and I have two PON ports on that same OOT, I mean, the the system that's doing the allocation of the resource resources for the TC layer can just configure them the same, right? There's no real issue because they're on the same OLT. Where they're on different OLTs, then in, in that case, um, there is a, a protocol that's defined, the ICTP protocol, to um, allow uh, configuration of, you know, exchange of information between these two systems so that they're you know, have a have a consistent view of the TCA layer attributes. But um, okay, and, and today, if uh, you know, I think the open OOT and all the other stuff, and you, we decided the 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 OOT adapter will be in charge of assigning the alloc ID and the uh, and the uh, gem port ID, right? So, so um, those. Though those GEMPOR, TCON, ALLOC ID is transparent to the northbound provision system because it will be assigned by OOT, or maybe the northbound system can 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 push those values. But right now, I don't think it's in the scope. Well, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we we made the decision that hey, right now we don't really care that you know there is no protection that's required right now, so it's not really an issue. We said that. Later on, we may we may bring up the resource allocation. Okay, um, so, 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 so so yeah. To 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 do this protection type, we could have either another adapter that takes a pair of devices, or another construct oh. like a protection pair that yeah. is linked to two um, adapter handlers. I mean, two instances. Sure. And so every order is duplicated to both of them. So. They have, and sure. except maybe for one who is the leader currently or this kind of thing. But so we, we are sure that when something happens to one, everything is triggered to, to both of them and they stay in sync. Yeah. So that, can, right. that can be fixed by either a special adapter or a protection pair layer. I mean, a, a uh, adapter. Yeah. adapter. Sure. Well, yeah, we, 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 we multi class and use shared state, right? Sure. I mean, this, sure. this, this is a very old problem that's easy to solve. Yeah, I think we'd have to. Yeah, we'd have to solve it here, right? I mean, it, yeah, it's it's solvable. Like, I think there's lots of ways to solve this. Yeah, right. I, I think maybe the the important point here is that it's not that we don't want this or we want to prevent this in any way. It's really more of a question of how the code is internally organized with Volta mm -hmm. and its abstractions to accomplish this in a way so that O and U adapters are only responsible and careful what they have response that that makes sense to them. The OLT adapter is responsible for what it makes sense to them. And then maybe any uh, super adapters, if you will, that maybe we come up with that might be a, a, a collection of uh, OLT, something like that. You know, functionally, how it, how it ultimately ends up is, yes, as long as you wire it up this way, as long as the ALEC ID, the PLOM IDs are in sync and you have your uh, 50 milliseconds, 100% agree, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um and well, I guess you just you just create a new epic. So okay, so so in the future release of the of, of the vote, we need to consider this case. Okay, fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think it's, you know it's it's fair. It's absolutely it's something you know. Personally, again, our our lack of experience says we haven't tried this, but you know it would be doable. I guess mm -hmm. really the, the heart of the question came down to when O and U adapters, O and U handlers have to take certain actions. 
and when OLT adapters and handlers have to take certain actions, if there is any kind of gray area in between them where decisions are made, flows are constructed that aren't, let's say, reversible or trackable or, you know, in a way that you could say, I produce this flow to put something in, I can produce the, the anti-flow to undo it, and then everyone is responsible for their piece in a meaningful way. Uh, specifically, this got to the delete, which is really where this really reared its head. Right. So, yeah, and uh, and we'll, we'll get we'll get to that in a, in a little while, and we can okay. talk about it in more detail. Okay. So I'll just I'll just go through this pretty quick. I don't want to waste too much time on this. So I mean, there's similar similar requirements for for NG Pod two, right? With the except that so NG Pod two systems have uh, right now they have up to four wavelength pairs per ODN. So um, I can have four pond ports or channel terminations. And with all with with four different wavelength pairs, right? So they all get multiplexed together in a in a wavelength mux, and they now they all four pairs traverse the uh, ODN, right? And then the ONUs can select any one of those four pairs um, to uh, sync up with, and you know depending on failures, they can move to another, you know, from one wavelength to another, right? So, um, and, and this is protected. It's, this is this protects ONUs within the ODN. Uh, across wavelengths, and you know, obviously the you know type B protection applies here as well. So, except now you have just group, groups of wavelengths instead of a single wavelength pair. But Sean, in a, if if I may, in a NG pond two scenario, if you go back, this is really a function of the channel terminations, and various operators choose how to apply an entire OLT system across their physical OLTs, um, and so. Are you implying that you believe that Type B and NGPON2 have some coupling from a physical perspective, or that you'd want there's, to? There's no, that? there's no coupling. It's just that it's just that I can apply Type B to an NGPON2 system as well. Correct. They're independent things. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I, yeah. So, so, so. I mean, I, I, I could have my, you know, my, my pawn ports for one wavelength. All these could be on the same OLT system potentially, right? They could be on different systems. It could be just geographically diverse. It doesn't matter. I mean, um, I mean, there, there are implications around it, but but Type B protection takes those that those group of four pairs of uh, channel terminations, and um, you know they they there's a group them all together, and I can group, I have another backup group of the same wavelength pairs, and I can protect the same portion of my pawn. Um, I mean, there's, there's also type C protection I didn't put down, but type C protection protects not only the feeder fiber, but the, um, you know, through the splitter and the, the ONUs have two interfaces, basically. So there's, there's different types of pawn protection, but ultimately, you know, the requirements around configuring them the same way, you know, in terms of TC layer attributes, in terms of, you know, what they're doing in terms of, uh, Tag actions between the ONU and the OLT applies, right? So that, that that's just the interoperability part. And then, just as a summary of all this, so basically, um, so agreement is needed on the OLT ONU VLAN tag operations, and for POM protection, the tag operations of the OLT and OU to be deterministic uh, would be good if we could pass this BBS certification testing. I think everyone is kind of agreeing on that. Uh, operator workflows may be a good place to specify OLT and ONU tag operations. So right now the operators are, are defining workflows, and maybe maybe that would be a good place for them to define you know what tagging operations they'd like to see between the OLT and the ONU if they care. Right. Um, operator workflows may also be a good place to specify the um, QoS and scheduling requirements. So basically, it'd be good if a workflow might define a, a technology profile, right? I mean, there are also other points of QoS, like the NNI, the PON, the UNI, that the technology profile doesn't apply to directly, right? Um, but we could maybe apply it, and it depending on the granularity, right, of QoS, is it per NNI, per PON, per OLT, per operator network, right? So there's, there's It'd be good if the workflows themselves could define what QoS the operator is looking for and what granularity and, and where it would apply. And um, so in order to support interoperability for pawn protection, um, so for any given, you know, it's assigned TC layer attributes, must be deterministically known or discoverable and support, and maybe support the ICTP protocol as well. 
Um, so depending on the solution that we're we're looking for, right? Um, and this is just a picture just showing that. So um, different points of QoS and where the technology profile applies. Um, so I think I mean that that's just my presentation around you know why we want to you know look at standards and interoperability testing and, and some of the issues around that that we need to deal with when we look at pond protection scenarios. Um, okay, so if there are no more questions around that, um, so we can move on to the the next. Um, Area. Uh, I think we we can. I, I mean, in my what I'm hearing anyway, there's, there's no real issue with um, looking at standards and, and looking at standard ways to do the tagging and the uh, you know be, between the ONU and the OLT. So uh, I think so. The next uh, whoops, next sorry, the next the next section was around um, flow decomposition and log, logical flows. And um, I don't know if um, uh, you know th these were the, kind of the, the bullet points that I'd kind of picked out from the emails passing uh, back and forth. Uh, so one was flow uniqueness uh, and identification. Um, flow deletion was um, a big uh, topic. Um, there were some questions around the old you know, you type coupling, depending on the implementation, maybe some additional message message uh, interface between the ONU and the OLTs, uh, multiple OLT vendors and capabilities, you know, maybe some OLTs support, you know, some things, maybe some, some OLTs don't. Um, different modes of operation of the OLT adapter. So maybe, you know, the, the, how much control do we want over what the OLT can do, um, and uh, so other technology implications uh, around the uh, OLT adapter. So maybe, you know, how does how does how does this flow decomposition apply to say DOCSIS or EPON or some other types of technologies? Um, so, um, did you? Um, I don't know if someone wants to give us a quick summary of the um, flow. Decomposition issues, or maybe Ken or or, uh, or Nick, uh, perhaps. Yeah, I can take over. Okay. Um, so, so there's two aspects of this. There is the uh, the long-term aspect and the, the short-term aspect. The long-term aspect, there seems to be more of an agreement that originally in this uh, originally thought. Um, I have the email from. From, um, I'm going to try not to misstate what you said, Ken. Uh, so correct me if I'm, uh, I'm not quite there yet. But the idea was to have in the new core the logical device uh, in the core and not nowhere else. Same thing for the associated logical flows and the logical ports. Uh, oh, that's which, correct. Which is currently not the case in the, the present uh, volta. So. I'm okay with that. I think that's a good way to go. Uh, that's how we should do it. And um, I'm also going to try not to misquote Chad, but uh, he added something on top of this, which would be to stop the open flow flows to the core, the basically what we call today the logical flows, and then have the decomposition happen in the core and send something different, uh, maybe more me interpreting it, some different set of flows to the OLT and the ONU. When I say different set of flows, I mean different objects. Instead of sending open flow object flows both to the OLT and ONU, maybe decomposing to something that's more meaningful to the OLT and something that's more meaningful to the ONU, and maybe something different if we have like a GPU later or something else, or if we have like a the, the super adapter, the fair protection thing we mentioned earlier. After the decomposition, basically taking the open flow and sending out something more tailored to here is the problem. Like like open flow light or open flow, so something just basically an object model that represents. No, I mean, we, we, we create a gRPC object that is relevant for OLT flows. We create one relevant for new flows and then one for DPU flows. And so 
So there's no con there's no contract between the different layers yes. that's trackable and reversible. Yes. So the the open flow flows, the logical ones, become uh, old key flows and new flows passed on to the respective adapters and are then implemented by such adapters to uh, the most faithfully and compliant to the standards as can be done. Uh, we all agree on this piece, no, no questions. The, the logical port and all of this stays in the core and the adapter will just act on those uh, second-hand flows, the, so the OLT flows and the ONU flows. And in addition, uh, I think we need each individual adapter to be able to store the flows that uh, it pushed to the, the physical device in some way that is specific to the adapter. Some adapters will do it one way, some adapters will do it another way, but have the adapters being able to store what they actually pushed, the command they actually pushed. Because the ATRAN OLT and the open OLT will send commands that have a different, uh, a different objects and to, to have a view the closest possible to what really happened, it's good to know that like, open OLT sent those eight flows and they look like this. That's what they sent, and uh, that's the current state. Atran OLG send those nine flows, and they look like this. Even if the, the OLT flows, the, the result of the decomposition is the same, but then to implement them faithfully, it results in a different set of instructions, eight on one side, nine on the other side, uh, or something else. But some those eight and nine have to be recorded somewhere, and there's currently no place to do it. And the ONU adapter itself would and be responsible. Same thing for the ONU adapter for its own eight or nine. That it's yeah. like if those eight or nine ultimately get translated into four extended VLAN tagging calls and two VLAN tag filtering calls, and the ONU, or if it's a DPU and they do something completely different, or if it's an ONU, we're just doing no VLAN tagging at all. You know, it, it, I guess it's you know that translation layer where it stops being flow related and turns into something very OMCI specific even to that particular handler. So we, we would have in, uh, in the future uh, three set of flows, I would say. The logical flows, the one coming from ONOS, the open flow ones, that stop at the core, so that they decompose into OLT flows, ONU flows, and DPU flows. But, uh, or others. Or, or others. others. I mean, de device flows, but are specific to the type of device. Mm -hmm. And I mean type in the sense of OLT, ONU, GPU, not adapter or manufacturer. Or DOCSIS or whatever. Or DOCSIS and uh, technology types, if you will. And then those things are translated once more by the adapter, and those adapter flows are stored somewhere else, something that's specific to the adapter. And the adapter is in charge of storing its own flows, and the format is up to, to the adapter, and all of this. So the first two flow, set of flows are standard. I mean, the, log, the open flow ones are standard coming from ONOS. The resulting OLT, ONU, DPU, DOCSIS flows are the standard in the sense that are generated by the core. Yeah, not standard. standard may not be the right word, but they're the same generated by the core. Mm -hmm. And then the adapter flows are absolutely, I mean, absolutely non standard. I mean, they're up to the adapter's implementation. I think that's the way to go. Uh, seems to be in agreement with what most people have uh, planned for the core. Uh, do, you, do you see any problem with uh, this statement for the 2.0 with the new core, a new um, decomposed order? Uh, the only thing I'll, I'll, I'll say, yeah, the, the only thing that uh, is like, this is pretty much what we had in the emails exchanges. Uh, the only thing I will say at this time is um, the structures that we have currently between uh, the core and the adapters. So, like, for example, we use the open flow messages. Pretty much the, the protobuf uh, definition of the open flows, this is what we send to the adapters. Uh, and those are standards, so it's like uh, any of the adapters can interpret it the way they want because it's there's a standard for that. Uh, at this time, I'm, I'm I'm not so sure whether we should create uh, technology specific uh, structures that mimic exactly the same thing 
but it's really proprietary to Volta. Uh, this is something that as we do the implementation, we'll see whether there is a need for that. Uh, th th maybe there will be, but if it's uh, going to be the same, uh, it's really a mapping of the open flow into a proprietary structure that is almost the same thing, then why not send the decomposed flows, use the same structure? So I, I guess it will be something that uh, that uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see uh, during implementation phase. I, I think the problem is that the, the flows, the adapters should, I mean, should receive are not too close from open flow. I mean, currently, open flow is overloaded by adding, for example, when you need two tags, one is setting the metadata, one is setting the tag, and then you have the, the logical voice set somewhere else. There is like mm -hmm. a lot of cheating going on in the open flow to make it fit. Mm -hmm. Well, well the, the metadata hack for the S tag is an onus issue. There is a, a double tagging capability in, thanks, in OpenFlow 1.3 and further on. It's just that Onus uses the metadata tag or ID. Yeah, but it's usually to, to implement those things, you need to, to have uh, multi table flows. And I think the decomposition aimed at removing those multi table ones into something more actionable because the multi table piece was really end all one piece by the OIP and one piece by the OIP on the way up and down. Um, so I, I don't think, basically I don't think open flow represents the most effectively what the OLT is supposed to do and what the ONU is supposed to do. That, that's my, my point about the uh, OLT flows and ONU flows. Yeah, so, so I mean, the, the, this open flow really doesn't understand the you know, OLT, ONU relationship, right, and the pawn. Um, but I mean, yeah, the, the, we we could we could add something to technology profiles. It was kind of brought up uh, a while back that maybe defines how we want to do the flow. Um, but you know, it, it, the, I guess All the right. assumption the assumption currently is it's a TR one fifty six type model where the split between the uni interface. Uh, what comes out on uni, they all use doing the C no, that, tag. Yeah, yeah. The, the splitting of the uh, of the work, if you, if you will, uh, it, it, it's okay. Uh, to, I mean, we we will abide by the standards, that's for sure. But um, uh, it's more like uh, the form of what's passed on to the the OLT could be improved, and same thing for the ONU. Because currently, what is passed to the OLT uh, adapter and the ONU adapter is widely interpreted by the adapter themselves, because there's no contract really. Because the con yeah, the contract is not good. Like we have to use the metadata for the inner tag in one case, and sometimes the metadata is the the logical port ID. So there is a lot of the. I think the problem is. Open flow doesn't fit this case for the internal. I, I, well, I think I think one of the problems is that, um, as you say, the flows that get generated by the flow decomposition, uh, they get put into the the physical ONU and OLT devices in Volta don't actually make sense, right? When you look at if you view those devices as as you know you know the open flow abstraction, right? You know a, a four D model based on match and action. And you look at the flows that get put into them; they don't actually work. And we see this with when we <clears throat> when the work we're doing with Pansum, which is basically just an open flow switch trying to interpret those flows. The flows that that get generated by default by Volta just don't work, right? Um, and so, so you know, it's not clear to me whether um, whether it's just a matter of fixing the flows that get generated by the decomposition to 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 push flows into those devices that actually do make sense. Maybe maybe that would solve a lot of the problem. It's, it's not clear to me that, that um, we're having done the problem that can't be solved by, by generating, you know, sane flows from the flow decomposition. But the flows that get sent by the decomposition aren't really open flow rules expected to be accepted by an open flow switch, right? 
the purpose of Volta is not in order to do orchestration of flow, it's in order to take a flow from above and, and apply that to an OLT system, which is currently made up of an OLT and an ONU, but as we add these pluggable OLTs and, and other types of uh, physical incarnations of the open flow switch, um, I think you're going to see a couple of other models that are going to even challenge some of the proposals today. Um, Volta was supposed to create an open flow switch of that entire entity, right? And that ONOS can't tell the difference as to whether or not an OLT ONU uh, combination, that whole switch is one and should be seen as one and, and the flows from ONOS or any other open flow controller should be able to apply the functional behaviors and have the same packet in, packet out behavior on that physical OLT, just as if it was an open flow switch. Um, I understand the complications of where network functions occur in rendering an open flow switch with an OLT system, but I'm concerned if we if we assume one model, 156 is a standard, 167 is as well, um, relative to how various pieces work. When you bring in DPUs, you have model ones and model twos. How all of that behaves, there are going to be a couple of different permutations. Um, sure, but I think from from the PON perspective, right, we have an ingress uni, ingress and egress uni, and ingress and egress NNI interface on the OLT, right? So there are tag action rules on you know ingress and egress uh, on the uni side, and same on the NNI side, right? So there's, there's so from the there's, there's, system. There's, there's, Right, right, right. So, 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 you know, how you take those those operations, like, so if, if I have ingress on the uni and I say I, I'm, I'm going to add a C tag and I have egress on the NNI and say I'm going to add a, an S tag, I, mean, I, can, I can imply, you know, what happens in the middle, right? There's, there's, a, there's an assumption about what, what happens in the middle there. If, uh, for instance, or, or if it's uh, like a like I say a, like a view as a, a transport in, interface that you know Chip was talking about earlier, right? With the, the like on the, for the DPU, then there's um, you know there's no operations that really happen on the UNI interface, right? But maybe some operations that happen on the NNI interface. So there's, there's some implications that you, you can you can I think you can take from the operations that occur on those, you know, the edge interfaces that we can then say, okay, I'm going to apply these tag operations in, in this such and such a way, right? Is, is there anything? Sorry, I, 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 go ahead. Sorry, I, I, this is Kevin Knoll. I, you know, I, 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 I'm not a, unfortunately, fortunately or unfortunately not, uh, don't, don't have the ability to, to be on the calls and, and, and hear the conversation on a regular basis. But as I'm listening to, to this, one of the, the, the question that keeps coming up in my mind is you know, we're talking about fl flow decomposition. Have we, have we actually figured out what that means or, or what, what, what is, what is the decomposition? I guess is I'm, I'm having a hard time figuring out exactly what that is for us. So, so I mean, from, my, my my perspective, you know, this ONOS uh, creates these open flow uh, uh, messages, right? That define operations on frames, uh, on, you know, ingressing on one interface and egressing on another. And then the uh, the Volta core currently is basically deciding that I'm, I'm taking those flow rules and I'm going to break them down into you know what components of the system does what based on these operations, right? That's my interpretation of what the flow decomposition is. Yeah, what, what pretty, pretty much, basically, basically like a, in the core, we, we have a logical device. We represent, uh, like, for example, if you take a simple case of an old and one new, uh, the combination of those two is one logical okay. device with um, one and the nine point, uh, open flow point, and one uh, UNI. Uh, open flow point. Uh, this is it sees as one switch, one device uh, to the northbound. So when the flows come in, 
the flows who really is between those two points, the NNI point and the new UNI points. Uh, but the actual physical device are the OLTs and the ONUs, and they're represented by the OLT adapters and the ONU adapters. So pretty much a flow decomposer, what it does, it takes those flows that's coming from northbound for that logical device, is decomposing it into flows that will be mapped that will be sent to the OLT adapter and eventually that needs to be mapped to the OLT device and flows that will be sent to the ONU adapter that will be mapped to the ONU device. This is pretty much the decomposition. All right, so, so decomposition is between the various devices that are being represented by Volta, right? So in this, in a, this discussion, the OLT and ONU. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that, that's correct. So, and I guess I also could add that it's, it's with the specific that this is an access network, it's how those devices are intended to behave on an access network as opposed to the generic Ethernet switch. So, uh, so, so then my, my follow on question would be Have we developed a, um, I'm not sure how to describe it, a, a, a network model or a, a, a hardware model or uh, just a and I guess we're maybe that's where we are as a flow model, right? So, so you know, if you guys were talking about uh, the broadband forum TRs, and there there's certainly other models, especially if you start talking about EPON, um, you know, where they've they've developed very specific service models, um, which may or may not be used by particular operators. So, if you adopt a TR one fifty six or or you know something's based on TR one hundred, is that going to be appropriate? for what we're trying to do, or do we need to develop something that's more generic and can implement those other models? Yeah, yeah, I, th I think, um, you know, based on discussions, I, 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 I kind of highlighted that may, maybe the, you know, because the operators are, are now developing workflows, and, and maybe the workflows would be the, the place where they define the kind of behavior they, that they want to see, right? I mean, both both tag action behavior and and the QoS type operations that the devices would make. So yeah, I think you know it, if if it was um, you know a cable operator versus you know a telco operator, there's obviously different uh, architectures. You know L3 versus L2 and uh, all, all kinds of different you know uh, standards that would apply in that case. So yeah, so the system would have to adapt based on what the standards were but maybe the workflows could either point to the standards or, or define what the operations could be right but i think i think my point is whatever we come up with has to be generic across all of those so that we can implement all of those is that would that be correct in saying that yeah yeah, yeah. so so the, the adapters themselves um and the core would need to support the different technologies so uh, um, the after flow decomposition, the flow, the decomposed flows that are actually sent to the different adapters, to me, they don't seem like they should be all that different from the uh, open flow flows that come to the core, right? They just get cut up in, you know, one flow becomes two flows and considers the fact that one of those flows going to the ONU adapter may push a tag, so the other flow in the OLT should expect that tag, right? I mean, yeah, but yeah, principle, yeah. Uh, just let me finish. In principle, I don't see why these logical flows should be all that different from the one that's sent um, uh, to the core. And if that's the case, then. Um, uh, uh, the adapters shouldn't have to do too much work other than actually, uh, you know, adding all the TCON and Gemport information and then actually formatting it in the in, in the form that uh, the the physical device needs it, right? So the problem today is that the adapters seem to be doing extra work or guesswork, right? That oh, this is an LLD or this is a whatever, you know the EA poll flow, so I know I need to send it to the controller, so I'm going to do this and, uh, you know, uh, ignore what came to me, but I'm going to do this 
thing because I know that this thing is supposed to do this particular thing in the application that I'm uh, uh, worrying about at the current moment. Yeah, um, yeah, so yeah. That's where things break down because like the SDN controller sends something there is an expectation that it got broken up into some logical flows that I can see in the Volta CLI and then the adapter went and did something else. Yeah, and I think Nick had kind of highlighted the, the, some of those issues in you know when he was doing the, the demo, right? So, so there, there's some, for, for instance, the authentication data path, right? That's just completely made up by the adapter, right? So that that, that shows up, um, you know, in, in as flows. Um, so, so there are there are some assumptions, there are some flows that appear out of nowhere. Um, so, yeah. yeah. So there's, there's a big there's what, confusion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's worse is that. Um, many times an adapter writer will just take the easy way out. Oh, I control my adapter so I can do anything I want in it. I don't have to go and fight with the community to get this accepted, even though that might be the right thing to do. And, you know, this something should happen on a Volta core level so that all adapters can adapt to it. But who wants to take the hassle of trying to change the code and then making other adapters work to it? So I'm just going to take the easy way out and do whatever crap I want to do in my adapter and screw everyone else, right? Um, this is this is this is a dangerous thing, right? Because then you know, uh, on a system-wide level, when you consider things above Volta, right? Onos or NAM or whatever we are trying to do in SIBA, every single adapter is doing whatever it wants to do. Right. Uh, and and so you you can't build systems um, where uh, the expected behavior is changing on a device level uh, or from device to device. So Rob, you, you bring up a very, very good point. And, and I, I think in the back of my mind, I was sort of thinking down the same path and, and you could take it even one step further than what I, I think you're getting at. Um, you know, ultimately. Uh, Onos or whatever sits above is the controller, right? It's true. So it should be really the source of of truth. So even down to I think the example was the you know, the EPOL packets, right? So that flow should be installed by Onos if that's what it's expecting, right? So you could take that even one step further and say, why does Volta even care about decomposing the flows between uh, the OLT and the ONU? Why wouldn't Onos do that? Just to represent the O and U and O L T as two separate switches inside Volta, uh, you represented to Onos, and let Onos take care of that. Well, Kevin, that's a much bigger question, right? It's <laughs> because Volta was initially thought of as you know representing the entire pawn as a switch. So, in principle, the S D N controller doesn't know about the separate devices, which is why Volta has to decompose it to the separate devices. Um, it's a much bigger, you know question I don't think we should talk about in this call why everything is not separate and uh, there is no you know pawn as a switch abstraction but coming you know staying focused on this particular topic that we're bringing up uh, it it seems to me that um, we uh, the Volta core should enforce uh, or, or we as a community should take the harder step where adapter writers don't just do whatever you know, make sense uh, to them. Sort of, uh, sort of. The, I don't think this is about adapter writers uh, just doing what they want uh, and and not having the discipline of moving things uh, into the core. Um, I, 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 if you've been following the conversation in the email threads, there are pros and cons of, uh, of, of to both approaches. And what Nick is proposing doesn't take away uh, from the existing capability, uh, existing model, existing way of doing things. Um, it just allows adapters that. Uh, want to do the flow decomposition themselves, um, you know, for for all the reasons that uh, that have been mentioned earlier. So it doesn't take away anything from the from the existing uh, way of doing things. Um, but but, but I, I, think it's a good, it's a uh, I think it allows uh, uh, both pieces, the core and the adapters, to move. Uh, you know, in in in. Okay, but well, no, it allows the adapters. Like a, it sounds to me like a workaround. It sounds to me like I'm, you know, bypass. Yeah something and, uh, and 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 that just opens the door to uh, just uh, you know no, I mean, I mean we, 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 can, we can get into the nitty-gritty details um, 
uh, what are the issues with 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 the with uh, with uh, with the flow decomposition right now and there's a long-term view of 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 that um which which in one of my emails i, I mentioned is as yeah we would like to see flow decomposition happening in the core and a certain api which is which is technology specific and that's that's which my proposal is, is that uh very specific uh, fl flow programming apis um right you know so so this is an experiment and it doesn't take away from from the existing model way of doing things and um you know so so you know it, it's 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 um it's an experiment we'll see how it goes and, and if it works we we uh, we consider it for the volta 2.0 architecture okay so what you're saying is that volta 2.0 will be what we all agree on but right now for the deployment for what we are doing really maybe only you know maybe we as in onf and at and and you know Tech telecom we want to do this for whatever 1.5 but in 1.5, we allow this to happen so we can move forward, right? But 2.0 will be the right way to do things. Uh, is that what you're saying? Uh, no, I, I don't think it's so, uh, right. I, I think this is this is another approach, uh, and we're experimenting with it. Um, I, I don't agree with, with doing the flow decomposition, the adapters. It, it doesn't make any sense. We should do it consistently across the board, the way Saurabh mentioned earlier, and, and we, shouldn't, we shouldn't do it for 1.5 or 2.0. We should push changes into the core that we believe are lacking in order to get a consistent model that allows all sorts of access technologies to be addressed in the same way. This, this is Nick. Um, I, so I I'm created the, this change. And I did this acting on the logical flow directly to have more control and be able to store the actual flows. That was the two main drives. Um, in the long run, in 2.0, I absolutely agree that the logical flow should be decomposed in the core, uh, and all logical things stay in the core. Uh, but, there is no, let, no me, let me put it another way. How much work? The problem is in the short term. In the short term, what we have doesn't work. We cannot delete flows easily because we cannot. We do not know which flows have been pushed. That's the problem. There is no way in the current implementation to see what flows have been pushed. If you check the CLI, it would tell you you push five, whereas in reality, you pushed eight. And that's the problem, because if you see you push five, and in reality, seven were pushed instead of eight, you don't know something's wrong. But if you see seven, and you know you should have eight, you know something is wrong. But, but, if you, I, I but I think all of this is a implementation. <laughs> Yes, go ahead, Chip. Yeah, I think one of the missing, I think the, in, in the core, when things get decomposed, it recalculates the flow ID based off of a hash, and that is placed as, as the entry point into a map that dictates the flow. So if, say, on the own, you are on a device, if they happen to have the exact same uh, input and output matches from two different flows, they get composed into a single one. If you add in, instead of that calculation for the flow ID, if you just add an extra piece of information, which is the parent flow ID, you can have uniqueness. So those eight flows that even though uh, the rules look exactly the same for match action rules, you, you will notice that they map to, to more than one uh, logical flow. And with that, you can have enough information to correct, correctly remove things. The, the thing is, I there is no way currently in Volta to see if those flows have actually been pushed. I'm supposed to have eight. If one flow fails, I have seven. There is no way to see it in Volta. Uh, uh, Nick, uh, I think there's, there's two different issues uh, that you're mentioning. I, I, I know there are multiple issues at play. Uh, but, uh, but, I, but the I, one, but the one that uh, there's one. Uh, the issue that you're mentioning about not seeing the actual flows have been pushed, uh, those can be easily be fixed by adding additional parameters in the in the in the device proto messages for things that has been pushed. So you so you'll have a different entries that somebody from CLI can see. But that doesn't mean but that doesn't mean that we should have a a flag to just to fix that issue. 
the open OLT to go and do the entire decomposition. Like, uh, I don't see the reason for that. I, I, I see my, my patch more of a short-term solution, like stitches. We do this, so it works for now, for 1.5 1 or whatever the, the current version is, until 2.0 and the new core is, um, is, is pushed out, the containerized adapters are pushed out, at, at which point we just do the decomposition in the core and just have the adapter create the, 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 the actual flows that goes to the device and store them on their own terms. But it's more like a, a short-term solution. The, the, the patch is fully backward compatible. It can serve as an experimentation. And it's not breaking anything. It's fully isolated. And it's allowing a few features for OpenOLT that are unnecessary in the short term at least for at and deployment. So, so, so Nick, it, 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 there was mention about an additional messaging flow, additional interface required between the ONU and OLT. Um, I mean, that, that's, I think, maybe a, a big difference uh, in terms it's, it's of the implementation. Not, it's, not, it's not regarding the flows. The other interfaces were for disabling and enabling, but since, uh, when was it, like yesterday's call, um, I. Okay, I, I now understand what we mean by disabling and enabling, so those interfaces are gone. There is one thing for delete, but that's an, another problem. It's, uh, it's unrelated to the flows. I think we should make sure for okay. the future to have a delete interface, I mean, to propagate the deletion of the device to the parent, because the parent probably has some cleanup to do internally. Okay, so, so I mean, just to, also just as a time check, we've got like, just a few minutes left, a couple of minutes left here. Um, so, uh, could we, could someone summarize where we are with the, the flow decomposition? Um, and from, um, I don't know, maybe Nick or, or, or Ken? Uh, or, I, or, uh, in my view, in the, in the long term, the 2.0 timeframe and the new core, all logical flows stop at the core, all logical ports and logical device stop at the core. And then it is uh, decomposed in the core and sent to the various adapters. And then the adapters will act on those flows. They receive push flows to the device and store such flows somewhere that it can be accessed for troubleshooting, maintenance, and so on. Reversibility. Reversibility. In the meantime, I like this patch to be approved because it's fully backward compatible and allows some features for the short run. Once the new call comes out, this goes away, and and everything has to be redone. I mean, all interfaces with the adapters and the core have to be redone anyway. So this is going to go away. And specifically, this is the feed, this is deleting, right? This I mean, is put ultimately flows. we have no way of deleting cleanly. And the way the flows are decomposed in the adapters, I mean, not decomposed, interpreted in the adapters, it's currently not clean. Like it's taking some flows, discarding some others. It's not it's not clean and doesn't give a good representation of what's happened. We fix a few of those problems in the short term, and I I do believe in the long term, keeping uh, keeping with Ken's plan of the the core and having all the decomposition over there, and then pass on to adapters is the way to go. I I fully agree with that, and the easiest way to to, to split the flows according to the standards and what we have to do. So, uh, there is, yeah, there we've is talked the about it on the long term view. Yeah, so we've talked about it on the emails and we've also talked about it on the call. So I, I think it's time to make a decision and, and move forward. What Nick is suggesting for the short term compromise and the long term uh, 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 correct way of doing things is a reasonable compromise, I think. And we should, uh, you know, the TST should. Uh, take a vote or, or just decide mutually that, you know, this is a compromise that we're willing to go forward with uh, so we can meet our objectives for 1.5. Um, so, so, so is there, so, so basically I mean, there, there were other um, speakers talking about, um, you know, there, there are workarounds for some of the issues that Nick had um, brought up, right? Um, it, so in terms of, if we wanted to do it, kind of the how we view it as the right way for 2.0. I mean, what 
and what what is the scope of of changes to to be able to do it the right way? Is that something that could be done in the in the short term, or, or that's a much longer term uh, effort? I think oh, to cool. change the current way would take a long time. Uh, the, well, well, there's two two aspects of it. Uh, the the aspect of moving the logical flows and logical devices into the core that's it to not all. that's a, that's really long term and uh, the aspect of deleting the uh, deleting flows uh, or seeing the flows uh, at the cli level that can be done in in in, in the in the short time frame uh, by by adding additional attributes in the protocol of messages uh, the, the only like uh, I have no problem with mix uh, patch. The only problem I have, like based on experience, usually when we put a a, a flag uh, somewhere to 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 allow a component to to go ahead and and, and do things to their own way, usually those flags remain around for long, long, long time, and we can't get uh, get rid of it. That's that's really my concern about that. Like I I prefer to to have. Uh, uh, different. Um, I, 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 yeah, Ken. I think uh, you know we put in XPON and now XPON is being removed, right? So I think we can, Julie and I, we can um, make sure, um, mm -hmm. make sure the whatever patch we put in um, will be removed um, at the point when it's appropriate. Uh, so. So as you said, the, the 2.0 may have some of the short term, um, like uh, you can show more flow to be displayed and things like that. If that, once that put in and it become uh, operational acceptable, then um, then we can remove what the, you know, Julie and I on AT&T's behalf will make sure it's the, the patch will be removed. Yeah, so the new core need not have that flag, then, right? Yeah, exactly. The new core mm -hmm. doesn't have yeah. that flag, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's no <laughs> way about it. testing from an API point of view or a CLI point of view. It's also about reversibility with delete. The delete is, is crucial, right? We don't want to leak flows, capabilities in the infrastructure. Correct. And I'm sure I'm going to keep this recording so I can do my job <laughs> later. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and I know I know the you know uh, so I I think Ken and Sergio I think uh, with my promise here what, what uh, can we move this forward? Yeah, I'm fine with it. Well, I mean does. Does this addition, I guess, for any O and U that wants to interoperate with the 1.5 version of Open OLT, they'll have to modify their code to support this addition. Uh, uh, this, uh, this is Nick. Um, so the way I've done the patch, the O and U are not impacted. I'm taking in the logical flows, dealing with the OLT side, and then the for the O and U side, I'm doing the regular decomposition and sending what they're always being given. So the O and U don't see any difference. Okay. So and and Nick, open OLT adapter, and that's it. The right. all other pieces are absolutely isolated, and we get the same calls and same flows and everything the same. And, and Nick is uh, the code is available for for people to review already, right? So I think Chip, you know, maybe you can take a look of the 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 you know see whether it's actually what impacting on. On a trans adapter or not, but uh, you know, I think that 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 is the thing we should do. Um, so, um, do we have a decision right now? Any 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 um, any still? Um, <laughs> I wouldn't say against. Can we, so can we put in this patch? Well, I, I just see that that the the effort to correct fix it correctly is is probably a, as simple as an additional field in the protobuf message, and maybe an additional key in the flow map, mm -hmm. and that would provide enough information to both adapters and and the core to keep this straight. And that's like a heck of a lot less code than custom OLT solution. So, so, 
so so Chip, what you're suggesting maybe is that something we can quickly put in on the on on, on in, you know change the protobuf above or something like that and see whether that do the work. Um, can is can has been mentioned. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll put that out on both the discuss. I mean, so maybe we can get rid of this one change earlier, mm -hmm. if it if that might appease people. Because as we put things and with special flags, and we promise to check it out in two O, those things tend not to happen all the time because we're, we are short on resources to do work as it is. Yeah. Um. Hey Nick, do you understand what the 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 protobuf message changes or something like that? Do you do do you know that? Oh, I I know I could do it another way. It will not be as clean. It will not fix all our problems. It will take time. Okay. If if we're concerned about resources, I'd rather not spend three or four days to fix it another way when this this way is fully isolated and will expire as soon as the new call comes out. Right, I mean, it's a repository, right? We decided that to sunset this, this call. It is, it, is going, it is going away in November or December. I don't remember the time frame. It is going away. There is an expiration date on this batch. I okay. understand you're not taking the extra flag, but it's, it's short-lived. Okay. Okay, we'll have to hold, hold everyone to that because this, you know, yeah, it, uh, uh, Sean is recording, right? Like he always does. Right? So. <laughs> <laughs> the, the core is completely being rewritten. You would have to actually have Ken add that flag, right? Yeah, exactly. It, it, none of the code will be reused. It's going to be in a different language. Right, exactly. <clears throat> different language, separate repo. So, yeah. I didn't see no, no, and, no. The code is the way, in a different I, language. <laughs> <to the adapters. laughs> and I'll make sure if we still need that, I'll make sure the the, the can when they do the conversion that will be in there. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But um, okay, I'm you, Sean. <laughs> I, I'm gonna start learning coding. <laughs> um, sorry, now the the whole world know I I don't know how to code. Okay. I, I know how to do with MATLAB. Anyway, so <laughs> uh, who's the chair of the TSD? Okay, so do we have the word of going forward? Yeah, I'm uh, I, I'm okay with the, the proposal, Sean, as long as you don't retire before we pull it. Okay. Yeah. And the uh, chip? Yeah. I'm sorry. Sean? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay too. But I think we should also have a, an effort to document how we want the you know this uh, flow decomposition to work within the core and exactly. any changes to the own awesome yeah. stuff. So, yes, yeah. I think I think that's what come out of this call. Uh, Dan Dan Newton. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Wh whom did I miss? I always miss yeah. someone. Yeah. Chat. I want to. Have, I think. Oh, Sarav. <laughs> I don't know. Did Chad leave? Chad, I think. I think. I think. I think. I think it's okay. Yeah. So yeah. It's a yes. Okay. Okay. So I think Nick, please move forward. And then if someone need to provide a plus two, please present that. And I appreciate everybody's cooperation. And as I said, this has a lot of operational requirement in this one. So. So let's make sure whatever captured here, we can have a very good document, uh, documentation and requirement track for the later de de deployment. And I know there will be impact for the other technology coming in, so we definitely need to look at this uh, much deeper. Um, anybody else has any last thing to say? Julie? I have nothing else here. I appreciate everybody's hard work and your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, bye. Bye. bye.